So I recently saw a film called Parasite, which turned out not to be about infectious agents of humans, but was actually a lot better. And it was a really great film directed by Bong Joon-ho, which totally deserved the Oscar award, but it led me to why I'd never heard of this director before or seen any of his other films. So being a scientist, the film that caught my eye was Okja, a film about a super pig. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we'll talk about Okja, the science behind it, and genetically modified organisms. So before I go any further with the science, I feel like I should give you a gist of the film, hopefully without too many spoilers. So the film begins in 2007, where you get introduced to Lucy Mirando, the CEO of the Mirando Corporation. And what Lucy Mirando announces is that they've been breeding a special kind of super pig. And what their plan is, is they've got 26 of these super pigs, like Okja. And what they want to do is give them to 26 different farmers across the globe. And then 10 years later, they'll announce who has the best super pig. So one of these super pigs gets sent to a South Korean farmer. And with his granddaughter, Mija, they raise one of the super pigs that they call Okja. And after 10 years, guess what? Okja is declared the best super pig. So why are they making these super pigs in the first place? Well, according to Lucy Mirando, the super pigs will be big and beautiful, leave a minimal footprint on the environment, consume less feed and produce less excretions. And most importantly, taste really good. So being able to generate food that has a minimal footprint on the environment that would consume less feed and have less excretions, you know, reducing methane CO2 production to all reduce the effects of climate change are all really important problems that we need to face in the food industry. And I guess the idea of it being big is to be more meaty and to provide more food per animal. And I guess tasting good isn't really that important, but, you know, I think that's in the film for that dramatic effect. So the film takes you back to Mija, who's been raising Okja her entire life. And as you'll learn through the film, Okja is pretty, pretty much raised by Mija. And they have this emotional connection between them. And Okja's smart. Like, you see Okja save Mija from falling off a cliff. Um, and, well, I know, you've read Animal Farm. But, yeah. but um... The point is, is inevitably the fate of Okja is to end up on someone's dinner plate along with some vegetables maybe. And the film shows how Okja's taken away and Mija tries to get Okja back. So sorry about the spoilers. But going back to the Mirando's idea about all these different factors, they're actually really important. But the film generally fixes more about Mirando being a corrupt company out to get money and it isn't as much about the science and the environmental impact, which is what we're mainly going to talk about in this video. So going back to the super pig scent, how are they actually created? Well, according to the CEO of Mirando, I took nature and science and I synthesised. Yeah, that doesn't really leave you of much. So in the film, they claim that these super pigs are all natural and GMO free, but that isn't the truth as there is no literal way that they could have naturally produced these super pigs. But what actually are GMOs? Well, they're genetically modified organisms. So to give a better definition, a genetically modified organism is an organism, so a plant, animal or microbe, that has had its genetic information modified. And the way that that's modified is using genetic engineering approaches or transgenic techniques. And so you end up with an organism that you couldn't necessarily get just through selective breeding. So what did they actually do then to generate a super pig such as Okja? So in case you haven't seen the film, let's first try and describe what these super pigs actually look like. So the super pigs kind of look like calf pigs, half hippos, half manatees, and they're pretty big and they're currently all females and they have one nipple and these ginormous eyes. So, I mean, I think it's a bit sci-fi. Honestly, I don't think <laughs> you would ever be able to generate something like Okja. And even the director themselves, they, they, they claim that it's meant to be realistic, but it just really isn't. It's more just to have a nice, lovable character for the film. But however they designed Okja, they did it for it to be a sustainable alternative to the current uh, meat options that are available. 
And so other things such as in plants, you have like disease resistance is also another quality I would add to that list we saw earlier. But, you know, should we be using genetically modified organisms? Because it's a very controversial topic. So why are people against it? Well, mainly because they don't think the food is safe. And continuing with that, maybe they don't really understand what a genetically modified organism is. There's also issues with the regulation and how it's labelled, because currently some things, they might be genetically modified, but they haven't got a label saying that they are, and that can cause controversy as well. But other arguments against the use of GMOs isn't necessarily related to the science, but more to do with the companies that are just trying to make a profit, such as you see with the Miranda Corporation in the film Okja. So what are the arguments for the use of genetically modified organisms then? Well, one quote from Robert Zake, who is very current and knowledgeable in this area, uh, he said that to feed the world, we would have to grow 10,000 years worth of food in the next 30 years. And going on from this, basically there is a huge food crisis at the moment, and not only in the amount of food we can generate, but making sure that what we do generate is sustainable and done in an environmentally friendly manner. So, you know, as I've already mentioned, the idea behind these modified organisms is to reduce the impact that the crops and organisms have on land use and CO2 emissions, which is all to try and reduce the impact of climate change whilst feeding the world at the same time. And so, yeah, this goes back to what the Miranda Corporation were trying to do with having a minimal footprint, consuming less feed and producing less excretions. So, as I've already said, I don't think you would see a super pig like Okja in the future, but we can at least evaluate if they achieve some of these goals with regards to being sustainable alternatives to meat. So, from watching the film, I didn't really know how much Okja was eating, but it seemed like it was eating less feed and definitely had some weird kind of excretion system. But, in terms of more food production, it took 10 years to raise Okja which actually means the output in terms of meat production is very low for the super pigs. So yeah, I don't think Okja would really be a solution. So are there alternative genetically modified organisms that would be effective for sustainable food production in the future? Well, you may have already heard about Gordon Rice, which was developed to provide a greater amount of vitamin A in the rice, and that was to try and prevent vitamin A deficiency. So actually this is a bit different from trying to increase crop growth rates but more what you can do to improve the foods that you're eating in the first place so you kind of get more like bang for your buck. And so I made a video before about these so-called potential superfoods. This was a very hypothetical video that I made. But the idea is that if we can modify these crops we can pretty much be as, be as imaginative as we can be with what we can optimise and improve. And given that, you know, the population is only going to grow and demand for food is increasing. I think that's definitely where research should be focused on because it's a really important issue. But um, another thing you may have heard about are genetically modified salmon, such as AccuAdvantage. So this is um, genetically modified salmon that are produced by this company called AquaBounty. And well, actually on their website, they claim they're healthy and tasty, which I guess is a bit like the Miranda cook corporation they taste really good but more on from that they are good for the environment and for consumers and that's partly you know due to the way that they they can these these salmon they grow at a much faster rate so you get a much higher production of food in a shorter period of time which means that the use of food and feed for the salmon is much lower and you get a greater like turnover and um I think it's really interesting what they're doing and they received FDA approval for their technology where they basically gave, they basically have the salmon with a growth hormone gene that came from a different fish species, which means that they pretty much always express this growth hormone, which is why the growth rate is much higher. But they also said there's people are against the use of genetically modified organisms. So are there alternatives to GMOs? So one thing that I think in terms of the future of food is we really need to be able to reduce meat consumption. And so we can either go towards non-meat products or go towards meat that isn't made from live organisms, so to speak. So firstly, let's look at reducing meat consumption. You may have heard of such companies such as Beyond Meat and The Impossible uh, Inc. Corporation, where you've heard of Beyond Meat Burgers and The Impossible Burger. Well, basically they produce 
meat products like um, burgers, but they're not meats in terms of animal meats, they're plant-based meats. But even more interesting technology is being developed whereby instead of doing plant-based products, you can still create animal meat and animal protein, but you use it from cultured meat. So this is like lab-based meat. And so there's companies such as Just and Moza Meat that are trying to develop ways of being able to achieve this. So I feel like there's always going to be people who are against the use of these new technologies, either because they're unnatural or they don't really understand the safety concerns associated with them. But at the end of the day, I think it's important to remember that it's all about being able to sustain our planet. And I think that is what these companies are trying to do. I mean, sure, there's profits as well, but they're trying to make food sustainable. And so hopefully this video has been a good intro to the kind of current understanding of GMOs and some potential future options for food. So as always, thanks for listening.